Well, we haven't got enough time for all of them, of course. <laughs> However, uh, we did have a very interesting session today where um, uh, representatives from Canada and Australia spoke about a lot of commonalities we have, but we were focusing on three particular areas of challenge to small and medium-sized businesses in both, in both of our countries. And they were taxation, regulation, and financing. And CFIB, the organization that I head up, is, has been around now for almost 40 years, and we have surveyed our members, our small and medium-sized business members across Canada, for every one of those 40 years. And it's very interesting how taxation issues are number one, regulation issues are number two, and financing issues also are very high up, depending on the state of the business cycle. If things are, if things are pretty good in the economy, financing is a bit lower down. If things are rough in the economy, as they have been over the last couple of years, financing as an issue comes up. So obviously, these are all very, very important issues. And I'd just like to speak briefly to each one of them in terms of what we've found when we've done research into them, what the main kind of challenges are for small firms, and perhaps some of the things that we can do about them. And first of all, taxation, obviously, we all deal with it. Uh, but it's not simply the level of taxes, also the complexity of the system. And smaller firms typically uh, it's more difficult for them to deal with the burden that government places on them in terms of taxation. And a lot of it is because small firms tend to be more labor intensive on average, and we have a real preponderance of payroll taxation, whether it be federal EICPP, workers' comp, health taxes at the provincial level, uh, property taxes, well, they're not exactly payroll, but they're a fixed tax as well. So that's one reason that smaller firms tend to be uh, more, uh, it's more difficult for them to comply with tax systems. Uh, Another reason is that a small firm can't hire a bunch of high-priced accountants to get them, like these guys, uh, to get them to, to be able to take advantage of. There are parts of the system that you can take advantage of, but you often need some pretty serious high-priced talent to do that. And typically a small firm with eight or ten employees isn't going to be able to afford that kind of thing. And that speaks to the complexity of the system, because our system is sufficiently complicated. It's tough to uh, understand and comply with properly unless you have some help. Um, another issue is our levels of government. We have a lot of government in this country for a big geography, but a relatively small population. We have three levels of government, and they rarely get together to collaborate on a whole range of different issues. And obviously, well, we have the HST right now, so we actually have an example where federal and provincial governments have in the past, and currently two, two others, unless Van der Zam has his way, um, uh, are, are, uh, are looking at streamlining one particular tax. But let's face it, there's a ton of other areas where our, our governments could collaborate instead of imposing imposing multiple taxes uh, and, and so on on, on our businesses, uh, we could do a lot better in terms of that. Interprovincial trade barriers, obviously, are another example and so on. And I must say, though, that even though small, medium-sized firms are more vulnerable and they find these issues more problematic, obviously, if we do streamline these systems, everybody will benefit. Big firms will benefit, too. So it's not simply a small business issue, but that is where the, the shoe pinches uh, a considerable amount. And of course, to our tax level in Canada, I think... Certainly our constituency would say they do find it too high. And we look at the total tax burden, not any one particular tax, but the total burden imposed by every level of government. And, you know, we see what's happening in Europe right now. And we have a lot of government here in Canada. We, we did some recent research that showed, uh, even though obviously the private sector contracted during the recession, as it typically does in recessions, and we looked at the role of small firms, uh, large firms, and the government sector, small firms decreased their employment by a bit. They actually held their own. Large corporations laid off people by the tens of thousands. Government grew. Uh, that's a problem. Let's face it. Sooner or later, we're going to be Greece, and I don't think we want to go there. Um, the, also, in relation to the regulatory issue, we, the research that we've done at CFIB on the regulatory burden, the largest single part of the burden of, of regulation in general, regulation red tape paper burden, is coming from taxation. So obviously they're very linked issues. just want to make a few brief comments on financing. Uh, we actually found uh, they are, are conventional financial institutions, banks, uh, uh, credit unions, uh, and so on, behaved more responsibly from our standpoint in the last recession than they did in the two previous recessions. We saw, I think, them taking a bit of a longer view. Yes, businesses had some challenges, but they were still viable businesses. So we actually saw banks, and, and I commend them for that, uh, they actually thought, okay, this 
person, this business might be in a little bit of hot water, but they're still a viable business. We're not going to make things worse by, say, cutting their credit line in half or denying them credit. New, new firms and, and firms that didn't have an existing relationship with the bank, they had challenges. But again, I guess that's not really unexpected. So that's some good news on the financial sector front. Unfortunately, of course, a lot of the sort of non-bank players, whether they were leasing, whether they were, they, they were some other uh, foreign players in the Canadian market, deserted the market. And that was actually the biggest problem, even though none of them were huge in and of themselves, collectively they represented a fair bit of financing. So that, w that was an issue there. Um, but overall, in terms of our current situation, we actually see, uh, and this is different than a lot of other countries, because we did have some stability in our banking sector relative to other countries, we actually see now almost an oversupply of credit in the market because the, the, the demand for it is still being very cautious because we still have, we have a recovery, but as we all know, there's still a lot of uncertainty out there and firms are behaving accordingly by not drawing down, say, their line of credit and so on. Finally, the, is the third issue I want to spend uh, a bit more time on, the whole red tape uh, paper burden issue. And it also has many components. Of course, the taxation uh, I mentioned earlier, uh, complexity, duplication among levels of government, differences in jurisdictions, of course. We have provinces that all regulate things differently across the country. If you operate in more than one jurisdiction, that's a huge problem. Um, and something else that I don't think is focused on, we've looked at government service levels, and government service levels just aren't very good. Uh, there's no built-in incentives to do things like uh, get... We, we, we can use the CRA as one example, for instance. Uh, there aren't really much in the way of incentives to give accurate advice. Now, we have had a little bit of improvement in accountability, but why, for example, can we not can affirm when they phone CRA and say, okay, I, I'd like to do this, how do I do it? Can I have a written ruling? No, you can't have a written ruling. That, how ridiculous is that? You know, taxpayers deserve to have written rulings. We actually had some success in British Columbia with having a taxpayer fairness code where a, a couple of the key components were you could get a written ruling, and even if the written ruling was wrong, it would be upheld. And those kinds of... We're, we're currently advocating quite strenuously to adopt this at the federal level, particularly with the HST, because, of course, now a lot more provinces are going to be involved in the sales tax as administered by the CRA. But those are just examples. I mean, there, you, you could probably look at any part of, uh, and not just the federal bureaucracy, every bureaucracy, what are the incentives to provide good service? Very, very little. Are there consequences to not providing good service? No, there are not. Uh, and, and on and on. And um, uh, some of the overall research that we've done at CFIB, we've done two comprehensive studies on the overall burden of, of red tape and paper burden. Uh, 2005, our estimate was about $33 billion. In 2010, it actually came down a touch, $31 billion. Still too much, but at least we're going in the right direction. So we have seen some progress, but we need a lot. We need to do an awful lot more. And I think some of the things that are overlooked, uh, there's obviously cost to the business, but there's a lot of personal aspects to it too. We don't find the solutions complex, but they are tough slogging. They're real work. You know, we have to get into bureaucracies. We have to get culture changes. We have to get uh, people on board. But the number one uh, prerequisite is political will. And we need government to take this very seriously, uh, uh, to, to deal with, uh, you will get resistance from bureaucracies. It's just the natural. It's not a personal attack. It's just the, the nature of things. <laughs> Uh, and we, but we do need a culture change there. But something else about, about the whole regulatory burden, it needs to be measured, it needs to be monitored, and it needs to be built into the system. Because we can have a really good effort, but then a year later, it's all gone for naught because we've, we've just replaced all of the streamlining uh, that we did in the first place with more complexity. And um, as I mentioned, we have had some successes, things like with the BC government, with BizPal, which is a collaborative effort of three levels of government. I'm not sure if you're aware of it, but if you go on the internet and, and Google BizPal, you'll see that if you want to start a business and you want to start a bed and breakfast in Moose Jaw, you can actually go there and see every single permit and license and, and whatever you have to fill out for every single level of government. Of of course, our ulterior motive, I hope there's not too many government people in the audience here, our ulterior motive in doing this is that once it's done, you're going to see why the heck do you need 43 permits to have a, business, a bed and breakfast in, in Moose Jaw, you know? That's crazy. Can't we just streamline this? So there's, there's a lot of work that's already been done. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. And I'll just close by saying also the timing is excellent for this kind of initiative. No governments anywhere have money right now. They're all in debt up to the yin-yang, which means we're all in debt up to the yin-yang. So what a great way to boost productivity by streamlining the burden of government on our economy in general, on a small, medium-sized business in particular. Thank you.